Hello everyone and welcome to my corner of the world. Today I'm going to be sharing a watercolour wash technique to create this kind of like a silhouette type card. I'm featuring the Botanical Layer stamp set, um, one of my favourite types with images as well as words. Uh, as you can see, lots of leaves. I'm going to be using this one today. The card is using the thank you or thinking of you stamp but the one I'm going to share with you I'm going to use the thank you for everything uh, stamp and, and really I just wanted to show you that the same card design and layout can be used for different occasions uh, it's just a matter of swapping out the stamp we're going to start with a piece of watercolor paper now, this paper is quite thick and um, it's kind of got a little bit of a, um, a textured surface. And this is, um, it's not really like the polished paper that we get, um, the white paper that we get. This is specially formulated so that when it gets wet, it doesn't break down and start to pill. So we're going to start with um, some inks and I've got a block here and I'm going to use my ink refills and I'm using Balmy Blue for the sky and uh, Pear Pizzazz for the grass. I think Pear Pizzazz is probably one of my most favourite of the greens. So just a tiny spot on each of, of each. I'm going to just pop them catty corner just so they don't sort of get in together. And then we're going to use our, our watercolour uh, pens. Now, this is based, this is one of the old style. That's what I have um, in my stash, but the new ones work exactly the same. And basically there's a barrel that's filled with water and then some... Uh, bristles and all we're going to do is to gently squeeze the barrel and water will come out and we're going to flood this paper and that's why you need to use this special watercolour paper so that it doesn't start to break down and now hopefully if I can hold it up to the light you'll be able to see that you know there is a lot of water on there and that is deliberate so then I'm just going to take a little of the ink. So I'm just going to put my tip in and pull it back because we don't need it very strong. And I'm just sort of getting some water in there. And then we're just going to sort of swoosh it across the paper. Now, I don't want a uniform finish on this. I want it to look, you know, a little bit um, sort of mottled because I want it to look as though it's got some 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 sky and stuff like that. So there's my sky piece. And then um, to clean your brush out, all you're going to do is to gently hold it over some paper, squeeze it and let the water flow through and it will flush the bristles out. And then we're going to go with some green. The pear pizzazz here and we're that's getting a little bit dry. So I need to just add some more water. I've got it in a, another pen. They come in um, a, a packet of with three in them. So you can use do that. So I'm just going to, as I say, add some green. And you can see that this is starting to curl. But when it starts to dry, it will flatten out. So again, I'm just putting my like that and I'm just going to blend my sky into my into my grass a little bit and then we're just going to flush out that again and that's ready to the next time all right I'm going to set that aside for a few minutes to um to dry and then we can get on with some of the other pieces Now, as I said, my card, I'm going to use this time the other greeting, 
and I'm using the Memento um, ink, the Tuxedo Black, and I'm going to put this across the corner. And I want to make sure that I have it as close as I can to that corner so that there's enough room for my other piece. Now I just check that out. Ooh, just just enough room on there. That's fine. Lovely. All right. And then I'm going to get another piece of scratch paper. And then I've got these two stamps, which remind me very much of um, sort of dandelion seed heads. And I'm just going to randomly stamp all over or all around sort of the outside edge, the bit that would be visible when we um, finish assembling. So I like to stamp off the card a little bit. I don't know, it just makes it look a little bit more natural. I'm going to pop a couple of these little ones over here a bit. Or maybe one up there. I'm not sure if that's going to show. <clears throat> now, with these type of stamp pads where they don't have like a locking lid, I do like to use a rubber band to hold the lid on and then I store it upside down and that keeps the ink on the surface of the of the pad. Okay. Now my card base is Pear Pizzazz and I'm just going to attach the card base, this piece to the to the card base. Um, my card base is 11 by uh four and a quarter and i've scored it at five and a half and i'm just going to attach that like that <clears throat> and then um we can go ahead and start to uh, work on this piece. So we'll see if it's dry. Let me see. I do, I've got one that I did do a little earlier just in case it wasn't dry. This one is, if you can see the one I've just done, it's still got, it's still got um, some dampness on it. Um, so I'm going to use one that I did do a little earlier just in case. I was a bit concerned I don't really want to just sit here waiting. Now, if you're in a hurry to get your card finished, you could always use your heat tool on it. So <clears throat> I've got my stamparatus out and I was mentioning a few minutes ago that the paper kind of has a bit of a, a textured surface. And so I found in order to get a good uh, image on this, um, if I use my stamparatus, it means that I can use it. I can um, use it several, I can stamp several times. So <clears throat> basically what I did was I laid my piece of card down like that and then put my stamp on the top, brought it over. So I know exactly where I want my stamp to be on my piece of paper. And I just put a couple of marks on there as well. Right. Now I'm going to use magnets to hold this in place. And I just want to make it just tip um, the opposite corners like that, just to hold it firmly. And then we're going to go back with our mental black ink. And we're going to ink up. So just I'm just gently tapping. And then I'm going to bring this over and press firmly and I'm going to use my little I'm not quite sure what it's called but it's a nice little thing that my friend Ellie in the UK showed me how to make and it just allows me to firmly press all over just to make sure that I get my ink transfer now you can probably see that it's not ever such a good impression so without moving anything I'm just going to go back in and put some more ink down. 
And that's the beauty of using your stamparatus because if you don't move anything, it will, so everything will stay in place and you'll be able to go over it several times. And I'm just gonna do one more time, just one more time. I mean, it's a very dainty little stamp anyway. The leaves are very sort of light anyway. So I'm not expecting a deep, dark black image but I did want just a bit more definition. And that's better. I think I'm happy now. And while I'm here, I think I'm just going to add a couple of the tiny, tiny little daffodil not daffodil, where's my mind? Um, dandelions, just like it's floating off into the distance, like that. So now it's down to assembly and I'm going to put, layer this onto some balmy blue. Now this paper, as I said, is, qu is quite thick. And once it's um, got the uh, been watercolored, it does tend to sort of be a little bit stiffer. And to be honest with you, regular adhesives uh, aren't strong enough to hold this in place. So I am going to use my double-sided tape um, to make sure that it doesn't drift apart um, as it comes out of the uh, out of the envelope. I have to say that's one of my greatest fears is that somebody gets one of my cards, they take it out the envelope and for some reason it falls apart. So I'm always really super cautious. Um, and I'm just going to Use my bone folder to just really push that firmly. And then I'm just going to take a little of the backing on each of the four sides. And I'm just going to pop it, pull it back like that. And then I'm going to layer it up. Now, all the dimensions and the supplies for this card are beyond my blog. And if you look below, there'll be a link to the to the exact post and you'll be able to get all the measurements from there. So now I've got it centered. Um, I can pull these these little bits out of the way. And it just makes it a little bit easier for lining everything up so you haven't got all that adhesive because with um, double-sided tape, because it's so strong, it kind of, you know, one and done. Okay, so that just pulled, that broke off, but that's fine. I can just show you how I go back in and get the, the rest of that tape off. I can just use my tool and just pull that out. And then just use my bone folder to really firmly pop that down. Like that. So this is going to go here. And I'm going to attach it with some stamping dimensionals. And again, if you follow me, you'll know it goes one in each corner and one in the middle. And that's in case it starts to sort of sag once it's in the envelope in the post. So we get these off like that. And now we're going to pop this up. And I'm just, I want to have something, a little bit of that vanilla showing at the top, but I don't want to lose my greeting. There we go. And then as a final flourish, I have um, these black matte dots 
and I am just going to put one or two on here. Now then, I've got some big ones, so I think I might get a big one. And I'm going to put, since I've got that going up in that corner, I'm going to put this down in that corner. And I'm going to put a trio. I think I'll put a trio here like that. And there, I think we are done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this little watercolour technique in to make a, a little silhouette card. And the fact that you can use the same stamp set, the same layout and everything. And you can make a card for two different occasions. So we featured the botanical layers and the watercolour pens. And our watercolour wash. Well, if you've enjoyed my video, perhaps you'll go ahead and give me uh, a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you don't already do so. If you've any comments, I'd love to read them if you care to put them below the video. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye for now.